everyone, welcome back to Elon's Restoration, now on video 8. Hope everyone had a nice Christmas and a sensible new year. Um, I'm back with the second part of the engine removal here. I'm still unable to work on the car at the moment, so I'll just bash on what I'm doing at the moment by looking at other people's work. Um, and also watching other people's videos on YouTube. I have to say, um, there's quite a lot of good videos out there, really enjoying them. Um, Matt Green, Dave Jaguar, it's good to see people getting their hands dirty and building it right from the start instead of just taking it to a store and paying the money it's so much enjoyment and I would recommend it to everyone albeit it's got its moments but everyone that works on minis will know that so I'm just going to crack on with the engine removal procedure that I carried out again slightly different ways of doing it but this is how I done it whether it be right, wrong, whether there's a better way this is the way I went with so when I left I was on step 9, this is now on to step 10, fairly straightforward this one. Let's remove the fresh air duct which simply goes into that slot there. And shoots out the front there to catch the fresh air. Sends the fresh air along through here, meets a junction and then comes in through the air vents here. It's fairly easy to put in when the engine's out. This is the plastic duct here. It's flexible once it's in. But simply fits in like that. And there's a plastic hosing that comes from the other side. As you can imagine when the engine's in, it's quite tight against here so it is a bit of a fiddle to get out but it just pulls straight out. Step 11, the carburetor removal. This is the SU HS4 model that was fitted to the majority of the minis. Single point injection and multi point injection came into the later minis so if it's a later mini this will not apply this section. But because this is the model for Elnor, I'm going to go over this for the removal process. So the carburetor sits on top of the manifold that then bolts to the engine. This is just a quick demonstration of how it actually sits. It's just through two bolts, like one bolts here that are then bolted on. This attaches onto the rear of the engine like so. Through various bolts, it's quite a heavy piece of kit. As you can see I've cleaned it up, got rid of all the rust and grime on it and I've given it a quick coat of paint and it just looks like a new manifold to be honest. So the first thing to remove to allow you to get into the carburetor to start with is the air filter assembly. A few different kinds for the car and um, depending on performance, age etc. When I first got Eleanor there was no air filter assembly included so I'll need to source that at a later date. Essentially, it goes over this bit here, tight seal, screwed on the top, usually sits over here on a, another bolt. It's usually butterfly screws that you can turn by hand that take them off, usually two of them. It simply lifts off plastic case and it holds the air filter element. Next thing I took off was the fuel inlet pipe, which is this top pipe here. Essentially takes the fuel from the fuel pump to the carburetor from the fuel tank. When I dislocated it I'd already taken out the fuel tank so I didn't have to worry about too much fuel getting spilt. You can just put a clip on to stop the fuel coming out and it's also recommended once you've done it to put a bung in. You don't want to be cleaning fuel off your engine or anywhere else on top of everything else that's on top of it. So the fuel in that one you undo the clip and you just pull it free from there once it's disconnected. The, as you can see it here from the fuel filter, this is the clip that comes along. It's simply, it's a push fit, it's a rubber end to make it a bit more flexible. The clip, I'm not too keen on these clips, they quite hard to get into in tight spaces so when I replace them I'll put in on Jubilee clips like the one off the breather hose here, it's a lot easier to get into. So once that clip's undone, that simply pushes off um, and you can put a 
bung or a bolt in here to stop the fuel coming out. Next was to come off the exact same as the other one here is the fuel overflow pipe. Oh, it's falling over there. It's the same sort of fitting, although on mine it was a Juby Lee clip, which typically of the mini, if anything's been replaced, it's 101 different clips on it over the years. So again, that just undoes and just pulls out, releasing that one. Then if we can go around to the front, there's a small plastic, I say small thin plastic vacuum hose goes on here. That just slots into there. It just pulls out by hand, it's not too hard to pull out. And that attaches to the top end of the distributor. I can show you the distributor here. That just goes on this nub here. So the last hose to come off is the engine breather hose. Um, I've got it attached here, you can see if you follow it back into the engine there. That simply Jubilee clip fitting is attached to, if you can see, this here. Fairly simple to come off, just the same as the others, undo it and just pull it. Some of them might need a wee bit of elbow, elbow grease. If you feel them stuck, what to do is pull it at the same time as twisting in a motion and it just sort of works its way loose. I have to remember it's been on there years if not decades. The next thing I detached was the accelerator cable. You can see a picture here of it all attached. Goes through a mounting bracket here onto a nut which has a spring. Spring hooks onto a bracket on the manifold. I can show you on the actual carburetor here. Bracket here. So the throttle cable attaches through here, this nut just unlocks, relieves the tension, the spring unhooks, when the cable pulls the throttle it opens up the butterfly there and allows the air into the engine. I've just kept my throttle cable in place, the cable's actually gone down inside here now but what I did do when I took it off was I marked what it was tensioned to so that when I put it back on I'll get an idea of what the tension should be. I'm going to put a new cable on eventually but it'll give me a, an idea of what to set it to. The last attachment to come off the carburetor before it can be detached from the manifold is the throttle cable. So the throttle cable, you can see the body moves up there, comes in through this bracket and there which is clogged with gunk at the moment, comes through here through the screw which has got a hole on the other side here. So I'll simply loosen this screw and it just pulls upwards and that releases that from there. So that just left the two bolts that bolt in the back of these two holes here to come off and to lift this off, which is how it describes it in the Haynes manual. However in practice I done this and tried to lift it out but the top end of the carburetor actually fouls on the bulkhead and the scuttle panel here so it wouldn't come out. Um, so what I done from then was just took off the actual manifold from the back of the engine here which is by one, two, three, four, five, six bolts. Take that off and the whole assembly lifts out and up this way and that. Once the carburetor is detached from the manifold, you can see here there's a mounting bracket that goes over the two bolts which holds on the cables. That simply just lifts off and keep that somewhere safe. I'll need to go back on it at a later date. And that's pretty much the carburetor. Quite daunting when you first look at it, but it's interesting to see how it actually works. It's effectively a tap that mixes fuel and air. But what I'll be doing at some point in the future is getting a carb rebuild kit and I'll be getting this all cleaned and taken apart and I'll try and cover that in a video just to show the, the various parts for that. But that finishes the carburetor section.
Step 12 is removing the radiator, which was fun in games because of the rusty screws. As you can see here, the clips were rusted solid. So, earlier on when the coolant was all drained, I told you this was cut away. Ideally, you disconnect this and take it off, but I'm replacing the hoses and the clips, so it's just easy to cut away. So this is, the bottom hose is already removed prior to this. So what I did first was I attempted to remove this top hose. Like I say, it was not going anywhere. It was just going to snap off. So I decided just to cut the hose there. The end of the top hose goes on the radiator on that side and then on the thermostat on this side. As you can see, the clip here was just as rusty. So. That was the first step to get rid of the top hose, the bottom hose already being. Next thing to take off, you can see on this picture here, is the bracket holding the radiator onto the thermostat. So when it goes on the radiator, it's three bolts in total, two go on here, the top of the radiator. They came off fairly simply. The one on the thermostat, as we can see here, just sheared off completely. So at a later date when I take that thermostat off and lift it off, I'll get a stud extractor and get that ripped off, but it's just so rusty, it actually just gave way. So the bracket, once those three are off, it just lifts off, it holds the radiator steady in place. I can't find it at the moment, but that's a picture of what it'll look like. Yeah, I'll be very lucky if that all wire brush up. I might have to get a new bracket, but they're not too expensive. Last part of holding the radiator in is this long bolt that goes through the bottom here. Attaches to a bottom bracket. I can show you on the engine. So the radiator goes over there into this slot here. This goes through the bottom of the radiator. And this is a captive nut here. Just screws in and it holds it in place there. Took a bit of a wiggle to come out, but once it was out, the radiator just lifts free. So the plan for the radiator is just to get a new radiator to go in here. I'm not sure what core I'm going to get yet, um, or if I'm going to get the fan that attaches to it. I need to look into that a bit more, closer to the time, but the case in will scrub up pretty nice once it's wire brushed and cleaned. It's just the, the radiator that's on the inside. You can see it's fairly clogged up so that just um, the cowling or the casing comes off it you can see the the bolts on either side there. Step 13 was detaching the fuel line that runs from the fuel tank to the fuel pump. As we can see on this side here the little clip that's what's attached at this end here, where I've actually detached it. The pipe goes in to the flexible hose there. To detach that clip, you simply get pliers on either side, apply pressure, and that loosens it off and you pull it out. The metal pipe is still in stitchy, and the engine bay here, I've just left this in here until I replace the floor pan at a later date, and then I'll remove that and make up some new ones with some new brake pipe I have here. It's fairly easy to do. I can go through that in another video at another time. So when you're disconnecting that, just remember there may be fuel spillage, so put a rag or something underneath just to catch anything that might spill. So you've got it on the engine bay. 14, the heater hoses from the engine are to be disconnected. The heater hoses come from the heater out these two holes on the bulkhead here. First one, if you can see on the engine here, I've just put a bung in this to stop any dirt getting into the area. The second one is at the rear of the engine here. As you can see, that if I come around this side, attaches onto the lower hose of the radiator and then runs below the thermostat. These were just two Jubilee clips, straightforward, pull them off 
I'll be replacing these hoses as well, getting a, huge, a whole new set, but these are fairly straightforward. I think at this stage I'll leave this video here and I'll carry on the next video with the rest of the engine removal. As you can see it's quite a lot of work but very rewarding at the same time. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching and I'll get back to you soon with the rest of the removal procedures. Thanks very much.